Hello, my name's Andrew Lane. I work at the Guildhall Art Gallery and London's Roman Amphitheatre, which are maintained by the City of London Corporation. And today I'm going to give a short five minute talk on an amazing artefact, a well-traveled piece of stone. And the stone in question was found during the excavation of London's Roman Amphitheatre, and it's similar to the piece we have pictured here. It's about seven centimetres squared, two centimetres deep, it's worked smooth on the top and the lower surfaces, and it has this beautiful purple colour. And the colour allows us to identify this as a piece of imperial porphyry. And this was one of the most sought after varieties of marble used in the Roman world. Originally, we think our fragment may have come from a marble pavement that would have consisted of lots of different coloured types of marble, which have been carefully cut and placed together to create a pattern. And it's possible that this pavement um, may have come from the amphitheatre. It may have adorned one of the boxes where the Roman dignitaries would have sat, but equally it may have come from another prestigious building in Roman London. And it may have looked a little bit like this wonderful example from the Senate House in Rome, where we can see imperial porphyry being used to great effect. And it's all about the colour of this particular stone because purple was the colour of Roman authority. So this was a stone that had particular appeal to the emperor, to the empress and their family. And they appear to have had a virtual monopoly over at least the largest pieces of this stone being used. And it's used in various ways. On the left, we have a wonderful statue of an emperor over life size from the Forum in Rome. In the centre, we have it being used architecturally for the columns adorning the interior of the Parthenon in Rome. And then it's used in various other ways, including this huge basin, probably from a bathhouse in Rome. So quite often it's associated with the emperor and the projects that he and his family are sponsoring. But it wasn't just about the colour. It's also about the availability of this stone. Because it's only quarried from one site across the Roman world, from the remote eastern desert of Egypt, a site called Mons Porphyrites, it wasn't readily available. And that helped to maintain the prestige of the stone. And Mons Porphyrites, just to show you how remote it is, it's quite far south in Egypt, and it's between the Nile River and the Red Sea. And 2000 years ago, this was a remote mountainous arid area that was sparsely populated and very little has changed today. And we can see this is a general view of the site of the quarries. The main quarry sites are towards the tops of the mountains, and that's where the stone was extracted. And then the Romans built slipways, rather like slides, down to the flat valley floors where the stone blocks would have been dressed, the excess stone would have been removed, and then it would have been transported to the River Nile and onwards. And Mons Porphyrites was operating from about the first to the fifth century. And because it's so remote, um, there's some amazing archaeology to be seen. In the valley floor, we have the main settlement, um, and that has some of the buildings that you would normally expect to see in Roman villages and towns, including a temple. Uh, this is the remains of the Temple of Serapis. And if you're wondering how we know it's the Temple of Serapis, we've got a wonderful inscription from the lintel of the temple, which tells us the deity and when it was dedicated. There's also the houses of the workers, there's even a small bathhouse in this incredibly arid area. And there's other archaeology. And one of my favourite pieces was this block of stone, um, which you can see has been worked. We've got lots of small holes in it. <clears throat> and that's where the stonemasons have practised cutting their wedge marks, um, which would be used to extract the stone at the quarries at the tops of the mountains. So they're practicing on this easily accessible block. And once the stone had been extracted and had been dressed, 
then it would have been transported to the Nile. And we even have the remains of a Roman loading platform here. Now, this quarry was probably operated by um, the Imperial administration because of the value of the stone. And we know there also would have been a military presence because of the remoteness of the site. And there was a fort at Mons Claudianus at this site. And then there's various forts along the route to the Nile. And one of the best preserved of these is the Fort of Badia. And this is about halfway towards the Nile River. So we can see that this small fragment of stone found in the amphitheater is incredibly well traveled. So next time you're in a, a, collect, an, a museum that has a collection of Roman artifacts and you see a purple colored stone, now you know where it comes from. Thank you for listening.